Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to D News Plus again today. I am Trace and this is episode 4 of 4 on time travel. We're just getting started. Or maybe we're finishing. Or somewhere. Maybe we've already done it. I don't know. Time travel's confusing. So far we've talked about when we started becoming obsessed with time travel and what exactly time even is. If you don't know the answers to those questions, go back check out the other episodes. We've also talked about whether time travel is ever going to be possible and what consequences and paradoxes and all sorts of stuff would happen. Again, go back and watch that. Today though, we're gonna talk about whether we have already time traveled. It's gonna be cool. Let's kick into it. So earlier, we did mention a bunch of paradoxes. They're very confusing, and we don't really know all of the paradoxes on this show. We're not time travel experts, but we've laid out some of the ones that we thought were super interesting. But most of those time travel paradoxes come about when you go back in time and change something. We are sort of already time traveling right now. It's kind of crazy. We turn it over to my main man, Kip, theoretical physicist at the California Institute of Technology. Kip Thorne. Quote, first let me say that time travel is already happening. End quote. That's right. He is one of the foremost theoretical physicists. He worked with the movie Interstellar. They actually wrote a paper because of the work that they did looking at black holes, gravitation, and time travel, and time dilation in that film. Anyway, let me continue. Continuing quote, the global positioning system I use to navigate with my smartphone has to deal with that. Time is flowing more slowly for us than it is for something on that satellite. We briefly mentioned this earlier. Uh, it's a term, time dilation. GPS satellites have to deal with them all the time, and we could not have GPS were it not for the way the universe works and our understanding of that under Einstein's theory of general relativity. Let me give you a little explanation of time dilation as done by astrophysics professor Dr. Brian Koberlein from the Rochester Institute of Technology. The speed of light is a constant. To use E equals mc squared, that's the c. That stuff doesn't change. It's around 300 kilometers per second, a little slower. Uh, again, no matter what happens in the universe, that is a constant. So our reference to time has to change relative to that. GPS satellites are orbiting at speeds of around 14,000 kilometers an hour. And the time on that satellite is slowed because it's traveling so fast. Or if you think about it as yourself, which humans are a little bit self-centric, uh, we are moving slower relative to that satellite. That is relativity, well, special relativity, really. But it isn't just the satellite speed that creates this time dilation effect. We mentioned it also earlier, but gravity affects your time reference. On Earth, it's a pretty big thing. It's got a lot of mass. So we are experiencing more gravity than a satellite even just a few hundred miles away. Because we are on a planet that is warping gravity, it's also warping space time. So our time on Earth's surface is moving slower than something on a GPS satellite. And that is general relativity. So time is relative for a variety of different reasons, both special and general. And in case you're wondering, just a little sidebar here, there are about 24 GPS satellites orbiting the planet, about 20,000 kilometers up. They're going again about 14,000 kilometers per hour. And each of those satellites has an atomic clock on board. Atomic clocks are not nuclear. They're literally just measuring the vibrations of a cesium atom. You know, so many billions of vibrations, that means one second. And we've also got one here on the Earth. Well, we've got more than one, we've got lots of them. But they're accurate up to about one billionth of a second, or one nanosecond. And the reference clocks that those would sync to are at the US Naval Observatory in Washington, DC. And the clocks on Earth's surface are our standard measure of time. So every now and then they check the satellites and the satellites go, oh, the clocks don't match. So they correct them by about 15 and a half nanoseconds every day. That's actually kind of a lot, right? 15 and a half nanoseconds per day. I mean, given time, because these have to be so accurate, they wouldn't even work anymore if we didn't correct this clock. Anyway, so those satellites are time traveling right now. If we didn't understand time travel, you would not know where the nearest ramen place is. That's crazy to me. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. Satellites aren't the only thing up there in space, and you would be absolutely correct. Astronauts are also up there, and astronauts in space experience different time than we do, but not by a lot. This is where it gets kind of like, oh, kind of sad, right? In fact, they age a little faster up there than we do, and that is because time is moving faster for them. We are moving slower relative to them, but the increment is so tiny. 
if an astronaut went to space for a year and they had a twin brother, you know, you could say that this happened because of Scott Kelly was just up in space for a year and he has a twin down here on Earth. So Scott aged a little bit faster than his twin brother. He is now 0.01 seconds older than him now that he's back on the ground. 0.01 seconds though, that's not very much. If you are waiting for a text message to come back to you, you know, you send a text to your friend and you're waiting for them to reply, 0.01 seconds, you gotta be pretty happy with that because there is nothing worse than waiting all of that time for a reply, right? Time is relative. 0.01 seconds, A-okay. But the man who has traveled more than anybody, time travel, you could say, is Sergei Krivilev. This dude has spent 803 days, nine hours and 39 minutes in space, which means he's actually traveled 0.02 seconds into his own future. That's cool, but that's still not very much. Technically, I just wanna point this out, maybe blow your mind a little bit with time travel. Because of gravity, and actually because of rotational energy of the Earth moving, your head ages more quickly than your feet because it's further away from the big massive object on the ground. Time also passes faster for people living on a mountain than for people living at sea level or below sea level. Think about that. If you work on an airplane or on the top floor of a really, really tall building, you're aging faster than people who are staying on the ground all the time. Time travel, all the time, happens constantly. You probably don't even notice. My buddy Ray in college had this idea that if time travel was real and he ever had access to it, he would come back to this exact moment and give himself $5. And then he would say, show me the money. Because you gotta give time travelers, you know, sometimes they take time for them to show up. Anyway, obviously no time travelers because Ray never got five bucks. Never happened, sorry Ray. There are people who have tried to prove that time travel has already happened. For example, in 2010, a filmmaker named George Clark apparently caught an old woman talking on a cell phone in a movie called The Circus. It's a Charlie Chaplin film from 1928. He couldn't prove it, obviously but it looks like there's a person talking on a cell phone. Super interesting, you can Google it, kinda neat. But it could have just been some sort of hearing instrument. You know, we don't know what was actually happening. Stephen Hawking, one of the more brilliant minds on the planet, also wanted to prove time travel. He must have overheard my buddy Ray talking because what he did is he, quote, conducted an experiment to test for time travelers. He had experimental evidence that time travel is not possible. He told this to Ars Technica. He said, I gave a party for time travelers, but I didn't send out the invitations until after the party. I sat there a long time, but no one came. <laughs> he's obviously cheeky, but come on, this kind of genius, you know? He's a fairly famous scientist, one of the great minds on our planet. If a time traveler wanted to meet Stephen Hawking, what better way than at a time travel party? And the only way the time traveler would know was, was after the party already happened. They could go back, and they didn't. Nobody showed up. I'm just picturing Stephen Hawking with a party hat on, and that's the best, it's the best thing. If someone photoshops that, please send it to me. So maybe there aren't people physically traveling through time just yet, or if they are, they're not making themselves known. That is something we wanna make sure, and we mentioned, maybe they just wanna keep it a secret. But if you wanna try it, there is sort of a way to try time travel. According to Professor Endel Tulving at the University of Toronto, you can travel backward in time anytime you want as well as into the future in something called chronesthesia. It's known as a, quote, hypothetical brain-mind ability or capacity acquired by humans through evolution that allows them to be constantly aware of both the past and the future. We usually think of memories as episodic, a recollection of past personal experiences, right? It's, it's time-related, it's time travel to think into the past, but not all forms of memory are time-related. Quote, you don't need mental time travel to remember a chemical formula or your mother's maiden name. You can know a lot of things without time traveling, but you can't remember events from your past or anticipate your future without it. He explains we developed this ability to learn how to avoid things in the future. We can predict the future, and sometimes with pretty stunning accuracy. I mean, think about how many times you've caught a baseball. You're not really thinking about where the baseball is. You're anticipating its position. You are looking into the future. When somebody throws a giant football, they're trying to get to a spot in space that doesn't exist except in their brain. They're sort of time traveling, sort of, kind of. Not really. And even Tolving claimed that there's basically zero hard science evidence for this, but it's an idea, an interesting idea. And along those same lines, maybe time 
is really just how we perceive it, right? Philosophers have thought about this idea. Immanuel Kant wrote that we do not think of time as a physical thing. It's a pure form of sensible intuition. But beyond philosophy, we respond to stimulations in a certain way the first time something happens to us because time doesn't actually play a part. For example, the first time you watch a movie, the movie might seem longer. And then the second time you see it, it might seem shorter, right? The first time you read a book or something, it might seem shorter because you liked it so much. And the second time, it might just drag on and on. All of that is relative, even though it might even take an hour to do both tasks each time, especially if you're watching a movie, right? The movie's still two hours. It just feels longer or feels shorter. The more we experience that or other stimulation, the more time begins to enter our mind as memories, and we're conditioned based on that. I like this thing from a Wired.com article, and it says, quote, according to the scientists, our ability to remember the past but not the future is a historically confounding manifestation of the arrow of time. But it could be understood as a buildup of correlations between interacting particles, right? When you read something on a piece of paper, your brain correlates that with the photons that are reaching your eyes at that moment. Only from that moment on will you be capable of remembering what the message says. So maybe we can't see the future because we haven't seen it yet, and we haven't seen it yet because of that arrow of time, right? Or as they put it, the present can be defined by the process of becoming correlated with our surroundings. We haven't experienced that photon, and our brain doesn't work until it experiences it. We can't make a memory until that happens. It's a little kind of cerebral, but it's cool. I think my favorite thing to remember when it comes to this entire huge conversation about time travel is that time isn't real. It's not. Yes, the arrow of time is real. Yes, the second law of thermodynamics as we understand it applies. Yes, increasing entropy means that the universe is aging until it gets to an overall heat death. But aging, what does that mean? The universe is doing something and we are perceiving it as time. Time does not exist. There's no such thing as a minute. There's no such thing as an hour. There is such thing as the number of revolutions around the, the, that the planet makes or that we go around our sun. Those things really happen. Let me put it this way. Your perception of time doesn't matter to the universe. And that's okay. Because no one person or one organism or one thing's perception is correct. The sun would see time differently than the earth and the little things that live on the earth would see it differently than the earth itself. Mayflies have a 24 hour lifespan. Do you think they're running around that whole time being like, oh my God, I've only got 24 hours, I gotta do so much stuff. For them, time might seem really long. That 24 hours could take forever. To them, we don't know because time is so based in perception. Gravity and speed and all of those things on Earth gives us time, right? It's different on different planets even. Our planet is moving about 7.8 kilometers per second around the sun. Our solar system is specifically moving around 230 kilometers per second in a, in a different direction, but toward a constellation nearby. If you were to stand somehow completely still in space, not on our planet, and just park yourself there and watch the Earth go by, you would have a different perception of time than the people on the Earth, right? Because time is relative. We already know that GPS satellites perceive time differently. So all you'd have to do is go park yourself somewhere else and you would be time traveling. It's so interesting. To wrap this up, I just wanna hold my own time travel party. So if you are a time travel person and you wanna time travel, get in here, man. Let's go, show me the money. Well, Stephen Hawking tried it too and they didn't show up, so I can't feel that bad. Guys, thanks for watching D News Plus this week. Obviously, time travel is just mind blowing. So why don't you let us know down in the comments what you thought of these episodes and whether they blew your mind as well. We can also talk about time travel down in there. This is a great community. That's why we like making this show for you. So take a moment, subscribe if you don't, share the show with your friends, blow their minds as well. And thanks for tuning in to D News Plus.